What's up guys, War here, welcome back to the channel. So today we are on patch day, we're currently live over on Twitch at YouTube right now, but Rapid Fire, it got an update guys, let's go over to the patch notes. Rapid Fire got fixed with Scoundrel's Kiss because while it was equipped, it didn't properly hit close targets and could sometimes fire projectiles behind the player and the radius has been also increased by 25%. So I have been doing a few runs here and testing out the pit, which is amazing by the way. And now we're gonna go through rapid fire. I'm gonna do a uh, build showcase for you. We're gonna go over all the skills, gear, paragon, all that stuff, etc. because there is a few breakpoints that you need. My gear is only level eight right now, but I've been having so much fun with this build and there's secret tech on how to use it. So let's go into the skills real quick. Let's break down and see what we have here. So this is gonna be a combo points build. We're gonna combo point again in shotgun with rapid fire. Um, so I have I have some ways that I make the build play out a little bit smoother. If you guys see my barrage video, uh, I just like this smoother gameplay as opposed to a little bit more damage just to make the build feel better. But we're starting off with puncture into fundamental. We fire three blades. This is gonna help enemies become vulnerable and also very, very quickly rack up our um, combo point stacks. Next, of course, we have Rapid Fire. We're going into Advanced Rapid Fire. It deals increased critical strike damage after we evade, which is very important because there's secret tech on this, okay? Uh, you could do Improved, it really, but it's really not good. We're a crit strike build, so we want this. Next, we got three points in the Sturdy, and then for the damage reduction, we got two points in the Siphoning Strikes for the heal, as well as three points in the Starter Step just to move fast. However, there is going to be some options here in the points if you guys do want to swap these around. Next, we got a Shadow Step into Discipline Shadow Step to reduce cooldown. We do got Dash uh, into Enhanced Dash for the Crit Strike damage after we dash, which is cool. Uh, we got Weapon Mastery, Ranks. I don't have the additional Ranks in the Amulet. I have it in Exploit as well as Fridge of Finesse. However, you do want to have this in Weapon Mastery with the Crossbow for more crit damage, but Exploit is still fine. Then we got Caltrops into methodical caltrops because we are dealing cold damage and as we all know caltrops does scale okay we don't have a lot of duration but it does scale damage next we got rapid gambits on evade um your cooldown is reduced when we daze and then of course we do when we critically strike an enemy that is dazed they are knocked down then we come down we have subverting dark shroud for even more movement speed um this is our big big line of defense here you need to try to get 10 ranks into this if you can um, you could always do countering Dark Shroud, but you really don't need the Dark Shroud uh, crit chance because of our key passive, which is going to allow us to crit strike all the time. But if you want to use it, you can. I just got more moves to so be. It makes the build play better. We max out Exploit for more damage as well as Malice for more damage. Then we are a Cold Imbuement skill, or, or build, I should say. We got Cold Imbuement down into Mixed Cold Imbuement. So our skills deal more damage to crowd control enemies, and it doubles once it's frozen. Frozen, absolutely huge. We got six ranks into Frigid Finesse, probably one of the best passives for Rogue this season. We're going to do even more damage against Frozen Enemies, which does actually, the 60% is, is definitely used against the boss. We got three points into Intervention. On a lucky hit, we gain eight energy because Rapid Fire is costly. 25 a pop while we kind of spam a little bit with how fast we play the build. We can go through our energy pretty quick. Next, one point in Adrenaline Rush for more energy regen as well as haste to increase our movement speed, but when we're below, we gain attack speed. Now into our key passive here, okay? Our key passive is precision. This is where we are going to be able to kind of do all of our little tricks, all right? So we are gonna rack up precision stacks when we use a marksman skill. Our marksman skills are puncture as well as rapid fire. We gain an additional stack if you crit, so it makes it charge up faster. When you reach four stacks, your next marksman ultimate or core, which will be rapid, is a guaranteed crit and does 50 times multiplicative your crit strike damage bonus, which is why we have crit strike damage everywhere. Consuming all the stacks of precision, the damage is further increased by 15% of your crit strike damage bonus, which is currently 392%. So that's why we don't heavily invest in crit chance because once we get four stacks of precision, which is super easy in this build, our next one crits and we do crazy damage. So that is our skills, guys. Let's go over to the gear pieces and the choices that we have here. We got Shaco. More ranks is better. Okay. We want a lot into resource gen and cooldown, which is huge. Uh, Shaco best in slot. 
Next, we got Might, because we are using a basic attack pretty much to offset and shotgun rapid fire. We do gain damage reduction, which is huge here. Uh, one thing to note with this build, though, you do need to get either max ranks to Dark Shroud or sub skills to help get to that 10 cat or not 10 threshold of Dark Shroud so that way you can maximize your survivability in this build. Next, because of how we have our Paragon board set up, we do lack a lot of resistances in the build, which is why we are going to have resistance tempered on here as well as resistance tempered on our pants. It's only two slots, but as long as you get two, and then your gems and your three amulet slots are the other three. You will cap your resistances, no problem. I also took a little extra points in the Paragon board to help cap this if you were to get low rolls on your tempers. So just keep that in mind. We are just under the cap. We're like 24 points, but we do have boots here, which is very important. But we got Might. Next, we got Retribution for even more damage. We got Undying so we can stay alive, which is super easy. Then we have Frostbitten here. Um, <clears throat> Frostbitten is really good because it scales our critical strike damage against frozen enemies. Although, I would love to find a spot for Shared Misery. If you feel like you can survive just fine in this build, I would swap out Undying for Shared Misery. Just to help, but our lucky hit isn't the greatest. It's a 20% chance. So, right now, I'm choosing survivability over the chance that when we do freeze, it spreads. But, for this showcase, we all know how good Undying is. For this showcase, when we go in and do 110, um... I will actually do Shared Misery just so you guys can actually see it because it is one of my favorite like powers for the rogue considering now that we can temper on chance to freeze, chance to daze, chance to freeze, and then chance to stun. Our lucky hit chances are very, very high in these um, like status effects or CC effects. Uh, but Frostbitten, very good here. I definitely suggest that you have this to scale. Next, I put Rapid on here instead of Retribution. This is the same thing that I did in Barrage. This just makes us using Puncture. Uh, it allows us to throw those blades much, much faster so we can fill up combo points and then just shotgun rapid fire. It feels much better to me. Now, if you guys are okay with it, then I definitely suggest putting Retribution on there or something else. It's totally up to you. Uh, in the swords, you want swords over dagger here to help with the critical strike damage. We got repeating. Rapid fire has a chance to ricochet, which is huge. And then we do have expectant after casting a basic skill uh, we can rack this up to 30 times multiplicative so that way rapid fire does even more damage we got emeralds here in our weapons for more crystal strike damage now the build or at least this version of the build does not work without the scoundrels kiss okay rapid fire now lobs and does increase damage plus we get the huge extra ranks inside rapid fire which is pretty awesome uh you definitely want to crit all rapid fire here i got it to eight just so we could do it for the for the showcase here but you definitely want to triple crit rapid fire here in our other ring, we got Accelerating for even more attack speed, which is great. This stacked on top of Rapid allows us to really rack these up and then just shoot Rapid Fire like crazy. Um, and then on our amulet, we have Umbris here. Okay, this is 90% chance to grant a uh, free Dark Shroud. Now, the biggest reason why this is on here is if we put it on our chest piece or something like that, then it's only a 60% chance. And because our lucky hit is only 20% with Rapid Fire... When we do actually hit a lucky hit proc, we want to have the best chance to get a free Dark Shroud. So this just helps us stay alive. So this is the best way, in my opinion, to use this. On the amulet, you would want Frigid Finesse as well as Weapon Mastery. Um, and then Attack Speed or Crit Strike Chance is totally up to you. Um, however, one big thing about this build is Cold Imbuement. We want to make this last as much as possible. Our next Cold Imbuement skills, we have seven casts before it resets. You have to temper on Cold Imbuement last, and then Cold Imbuement last. Okay, try to get two and two, and then when you go up, you'll be run around eight or nine charges. I'm at seven right now. If you happen to crit on one of them, that's even better. Um, our specialization, obviously, is combo points. And then let's go into the Paragon board, guys, so you can see how we have this set up. We only got five skills. So we have Combat for more crit strike damage, Control for more damage against CC'd. We have efficacy for even more potency from our cold imbuement, which is huge. We got exploit for more damage. And then as well, we have ranger because we are using a ranged weapon to do even more damage. Uh, now in the board, um, we took a lot of extra nodes here. So we took extra nodes to get to denial um, for more res. Now I want you guys to kind of look at something here. I'm going to talk about this in a separate video, but this is board one, two, three, four, five. This is our sixth board. 
before we used to not be able to even get close to getting the bonus. We we're in the sixth board and it's 460 strength on a dex based class in order to hit that double threshold. So denial is another way we hit the double threshold. We took extra points in other places in order to hit this cap. So we took this as well as um, taking some extra nodes in, in order to hit our armor caps as well as our res caps, which is very important. So yeah, all this is gonna be linked down in the description below under Mobilitics. So make sure to check out the build profile there in Planner. But without further ado, let's go run a 110 because on patch day, the pit is insane now. It's it's much better, much better. You can push a little bit higher now, uh, especially at the lower tiers for everybody who is struggling to get your gear to 12. Uh, it is much better. Now, potions of choice on the build. Elixir of precision is very good. You get increased critical strike chance and damage. That's probably the preferred one. However, you could do advantage for more attack speed and lucky hit, which would be great. I'm gonna pop one just so you can see. Now our lucky hits 3% better. It's not great, but we do get to attack faster. Uh, the Chris Strike Damage one on Precision is probably the best. Um, and again, guys, Holy Bolts is busted. You could still use um, the Quest Elixir of Anti-Venom. This still is double potions. You can still use them. I still don't think that's intended, but you can still use them if you want to. But as a rogue, 40k life, you are set. So let's go do this. We're going to showcase a 110 because now we have new thresholds and more videos coming out with that just so you guys can showcase uh and like push now the secret tech with this is when you rapid fire you stay in place so we're gonna break the animation by evading okay so when we fire up we're gonna go one two three we throw rapid fire and then we evade so that allows us to be able to you know move and get it going otherwise you'd have to wait and it's too long to me, it's too long. But I can already tell you that shared misery is better than undying. Oops, my mouse went crazy. Oh, nope, that's bad. I love all the CC. And you can see just me dashing between stuff. And remember, the more we evade, the more we scale from our bonus on uh, our rapid fire skills. So keep that in mind. You're gonna use Shadow Step just as a as a way to get out. I love seeing those overpowers. That's so cool. But I'm really starting to get the hang of this. This is so cool. Love it. Shared misery for the win. The lob is sweet, dude. It's pretty gnarly, man. And again, I like the rapid fire or the rapid in my two-hander just to kind of get those stacks up it just feels so much better like so so much smoother to me but again you can you can swap it with either one guys it does not matter it's totally up to you and you can see down here that we are just always going to be on cold and beaming we should never not have cold and beaming ever because the only time you should be casting like cold and beaming skills is just rapid fire you shouldn't have to use dash or shadow step unless you really need to. If you need to get out of a, a, a tough spot or anything like that or dodge and, you know, a, a certain thing, then by all means do that. But otherwise, all the ranks of Cold and Beaming should only be cast from Rapid Fire. They always put these guys in the back. can see we're just blasting man the one like normally at level eight gear is really when you can start like doing like 90s and above like maybe a 99 at level eight but it would be pretty tough it'd be kind of similar to how you see me doing this 110 but man it is so much better than what it was so much better you guys are going to be able to farm so much so much neath iron it's pretty good now again this isn't going to be as fast as heart seeker uh, in terms of speed but the build is just very 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 good very fun i really do enjoy it a lot i should have been i should have been on this 
this train a while ago. And I just wasn't. The rapid fire is pretty cool. The bug is all fixed. And we're just lobbing. See ya. Kill all the big stuff. Oh, yeah. There we go. No, no, no. Oh, the poison. I was super stunned, guys. That's okay. That's okay. We, we were we were super stunned. Doesn't count. And my gear's almost broken. There we go. Let's go kill the boss. Godslayer could be an option. Nope. Sorry, Bramble. Oh, yeah. You're not going to get me, buddy. What the heck? Ooh, he almost got me. The evade stuff is so weird. Kill it. Let's go, man. I imagine how much damage I would do if this was on gear that's at level 12. Oh my god. Oh no! We dodged, we dodged her and we didn't even know she was there. Oh my gosh. Get away from the poison. Oh, what a dodge. That's how we do it, baby. Dude, that poison is rough. Oh, no, no. There we go. Stake and stone. Let's go. That's rapid fire, guys. Clearing 110s even higher. I think the build originally pushed before the patch to 125. Now it's probably going to push to 130 and beyond. And our gear is only level 8. So there's still so much more power that this uh, build is going to have. And just flush out the build is just absolutely insane guys so make sure to like the video let's get this over 100 likes guys comment down below let me know what you guys think about the update and change to rapid fire because this build is super fun not quite as good as heart seeker in my opinion you could argue that in the the comments as well but i still enjoy this build guys and don't forget to subscribe and as always stay gaming i'll see you guys in the next one peace